Raj, at this moment, what opportunity, what positive op opportunities are being built by China's own regulatory crackdown? You know, I, thanks for having me on. I think that in South and Southeast Asia, if you look at areas like fintech and healthcare, there's a huge opportunity. Uh, you know, today, fintech valuations in the U.S. have been sky high. And frankly, I think fintech innovation in emerging markets like Southeast Asia has been far outpacing U.S. innovation mm. in these areas. Why? Is that a reg... Because it's interesting today, we heard that reporting exclusive to Bloomberg that maybe the White House here in the U.S. is eyeing up some sort of regulatory oversight of cryptocurrencies and understanding how and who should be looking at them. Is it more clear already in Southeast Asia? Is it more clear as to what the fintech landscape looks like in terms of fostering innovation there? You know, I, I think what's exciting about South and Southeast Asia is that it's not clear at all. I mean, there's <laughs> so much lack of infrastructure, the basic fundamental rails of banking are missing. And it really gives you an opportunity to build companies from scratch that are innovating on how things like payments and, and credit are being given. Um, we're an investor in a company um, which is called Katha Books in India that does accounting software for small businesses, but they do the accounting software so they can understand how the cash inflows and outflows of those businesses work. And that then lets them lend to those businesses and helps banks lend to those businesses because credit ratings don't work as well in, in, in those markets. What, as regulation grows up around it, how do you get an inside track? How do you understand what's going to be fostered? How do you, how do you ensure that you're on the right side or the businesses you back are on the right side? I think fundamentally for us, it comes down to does it do well for consumers? You know, mm -hmm. we, we think that governments understand that if you do right by consumers, I mean, we're making a lot of investments in companies that are targeting tier two cities in India and Indonesia. There are hundreds of these cities. I mean, India alone has over a hundred of these cities Indonesia has about 300 cities that we would call tier two and tier three cities. And people in these cities need access to goods. And you look at a company like Ula in Indonesia, it's helping small business owners, mom and pop stores, get access to inventory and credit that they wouldn't get access to otherwise. And we think it's hard for governments to justify uh, regulating businesses like these in an adverse way because they fundamentally help people. Raj, if you're looking at Southeast Asia as really having a beneficial time at the moment, what about investment in China? What about the beaten up valuations? What Are, are you there? Are you present? Are you eyeing on the opportunities? We are. And um, we think China is, is still an amazing market in the long term. I mean, mm -hmm. we invest in enterprise and healthcare. And in the next decade, you're going to have Salesforce and Oracle type businesses built in China. And our goal is to be partners with those kind of businesses because they don't exist today. And um, I think if you take a long-term view, you'll see that the regulation in China is just a natural evolution of the fact that technology markets there are only 10, 15 years old. So of course you need data regulation. Of course you need um, antitrust regulation. And um, it's natural that it's coming now. And um, our goal is to, to be long-term focused on China. But to rip up the script to such an degree that you turn an entire industry not for profit overnight, and I know you're not talking about education at the moment, but I'm referencing it. How do you think that China is making regulation that benefits the consumer in the same way that you're saying Southeast Asia is? No, I, I think that the ed tech market in China was a surprise for, for a lot of us. We we're fortunate we, we didn't invest in that sector, not because of government regulation, um, but we do think part of the government regulation was brought on by the fact that there were such immense amounts of money being spent to acquire mm -hmm. customers that these businesses had to then find other ways to be profitable. And education is, is a core market. And while it should be profitable, um, there's still a huge role for government. Um, on the other hand, we think healthcare, biotech, bio IT, in China is just getting started and our partnership with the government there and our businesses there have partnered very effectively with the government. You are, of course, truly global, as I say, Singapore, Hong Kong, Beijing, locations in India, but you are also in L.A., San Francisco, where you now sit, New York. What about U.S. regulation right now? You know, U.S. regulation has, um, has, has really been evolving very quickly with, with the new administration and you brought up crypto. Crypto is a, a great example. We're, you know, we've made our investments in the picks and shovels in crypto. We're investing in the exchanges that let people trade crypto. But we do think that there's a lot of regulatory uncertainty today. 
getting the licenses is a state by state issue and a federal issue. And this kind of regulation needs, needs to be streamlined for the US to keep up with what's happening in crypto globally. We need more streamlined regulation. We can't have 50 plus regulatory frameworks in every single state. Interesting that I'm not seeing Latin America there. We've got but like 30 seconds. Is, is that an area of opportunity or just not at the moment in your, in your viewpoint? We think it's an area of huge opportunity. We've invested in Latin America. Um, we will be in Latin America in an even bigger way in 2022. And we're, we're really excited about what's happening in markets like Brazil and Colombia and Peru.